It's not on. Test one, two, three, four. How's that sound? Is this thing working? Does it look stupid? <laughs> it's. I'll take it works over looking stupid. I'm used to that. All right. <clears throat> Assuming it's working. Is it working? It's working. Oh, okay. All right, our next seminar is at the end of this month. As you know, we're going to go through this uh, Messianic Judaism and Christianity and all this stuff mixed together. We're going to go through that whole mess at the end of this month. Okay? Then after that seminar, I'll be uh, moving to another country. <laughs> Kelly's taking over the ministry. I'm getting out of here. All right, here's my new radio schedule. I'm on every day of the week. Uh, yicking and yakking about spiritual things that you wouldn't normally hear in church. I'm also on the uh, radio 24-7 on the internet. You can listen to that anytime you want. This is a secular station here. I'm on there every Sunday night at 9 o'clock. 2,200 listeners last week. So I'm still below my level when I, before I got sick, but I'm whittling it back up. All right. Uh, you can help us by, uh, if you buy something off Amazon, just put in this and put in our uh, ministry name and they'll donate money to us free. So will Good Search if you switch over from Google and put in our ministry name. Tonight's teaching is on uh, House of Healing AZ YouTube channel, streamed. Uh, don't forget to order the miracle list for self-deliverance. Send me an email at mike at hardcorechristianity.com. Be happy to send it to you. The donation boxes are on the doors. So if you want to help us out, we appreciate that. You can donate on the website, on the PayPal button. And these are my three books I wrote right there. One's on exposing Satan. The other one's on the cure for mental illness. The other one's on divine healing. We switched our healing rooms and had our, had our first one last night. We do not have a teaching service here anymore on Thursday nights. Those have been canceled. And uh, I just met with the staff a couple minutes ago and it, it went great. So we're going to continue to do it. You know, every time you start something new, it's kind of an experiment. You kind of play with it a little bit, try to work the bugs out, that kind of thing. Right now, it looks like it's going to take off. So Thursday nights, 7 o'clock. The healing rooms here at the Deliverance Center. Do you need a tax donation receipt for your donation last year? Send me an email or call or anything, and I'll be happy to send you one. Happy New Year. Yeah, it's New Year. YouTubers, hey, you guys were uh, so fantastic last year. I can't even imagine it. We had uh, another record year of donations more than we've ever had. Last year was more than we've ever had. Every year it goes up here. So we're slowly getting toward our goal of a deliverance revival. And you guys have been sending in donations left and right. None of the donations go for salaries. We're all volunteers here, including me. And uh, my wife supports me. And she's so happy about it. Um, <laughs> You're so happy I don't want to go into that because that's going to generate a lot of jealousy on your part. <laughs> so anyway, just considered a, a ministry on her end. And then that's it, yeah. But uh, she doesn't really mind it because of, obviously because of the personality. It's, it's so good. 2019, can you imagine that? That was a fast year last year. The older you get, I'm in my mid-60s now, and the older I get, the faster the years go. I'm not making that up, seriously. It seems like they go quicker as I get older. And I've got to make my calling and election sure. I've got to get my ministry in the bank before I die because I'm going to be dead soon. This thing's going so fast, it's amazing how fast time goes by. It's amazing how, oops, how'd that happen? It just flipped, all right? That's the uh, Holy Spirit telling me to get going on the thing. So 
you, uh, God will crown this year, it says, with goodness. Psalm 65. Your paths shall, shall drop fatness. Okay, now remember, this was, this was written uh, well, 3,000 years ago, thereabouts. So dropping fatness doesn't sound like an asset now. But back then, it, it has to do with, you know, livestock and your livestock being blessed and there being provisions and so on. That was the term they used. We don't use that term, drop fatness. That's more like a show I watch every week, My 600-Pound Life. Have you ever seen that show? It's incredibly sad. I sit there with my mouth hanging open the whole time that show's on. No, this is a different kind of, of fatness. They will drop on the pastures of the wilderness and the little hills will rejoice on every side. That's the kind of year you're going to have. 2019 is going to be a killer for you. And uh, the top 10 secular uh, New Year's resolutions are what? These are the most popular ones. Have you ever made one of these? Uh, stop smoking, lose weight. Those are pretty common. Get into shape. You know. Here's some more very popular ones. Quit, quit drinking, get organized. You ever seen that? Uh, eight is usually very popular. The older you get, you get that one. You stop doing it, read more. I have some prophecies to give you, and I'm getting sick of everybody else having prophecies, me not having any prophecies. So it's starting to piss me off, and I'm... I'm tired of the prophetics getting ahead of me and the charismatics. They're always speaking, you know, the Lord told me this, and I'm sick of it. I'm, I want my peace. <laughs> tired of not having any prophetics. Now, I want to give you some right here. Philippians chapter 4, thus saith the Lord. <laughs> Number one is Romans 16. I am prophesying that the God of peace will shatter Satan under your head in 2019. Centribo means to smash. That's, that's my prophetic word for you. I got another one for you. Your God will supply all your needs in 2019. Period. Thus saith the Lord. Number three, Romans 2. Your God's goodness will lead you to complete repentance in 2019. Those little besetting sins you've got. You're going to get rid of them. Those little failures you keep repeating, they're going to go by the wayside in 2019. Number four, you will receive what you have been asking for in 2019. Number five, you will find what you have been seeking for in 2019. Six, the door you've been knocking on will finally open for you in 2019. Yeah, yeah. You tell the prophetics, Brother Mike is it's on his game over here. I'm going to start getting big crowds here. King Manasseh, remember him? He made a New Year's resolution. Yes, sir. He was encouraged to do it too. He had become the grade school king of Israel. Can you imagine that, being a king in grade school? That's amazing. He was king for 55 years. And he did everything wrong you could ever imagine. This guy was a certified suck. <laughs> everything he did was an abomination. This guy was the pits of humanity. This guy was the worst king that ever lived. King David looked wonderful compared to this guy. And he murdered some guy's wife and stole the wife. That was nothing. Manasseh had him out, <sighs> wiped him out. This guy was rotten to the core. He couldn't have been rotten in grade school. Somebody had to have influenced him somehow. But whoever influenced him, he went down the tubes huge. Well, Jehovah got tired of the guy and the Assyrians invaded and took him. They took him to their country and threw him in the dungeon. Remember that? Yeah, it was December 31st, I believe, when that happened. Speaking prophetically, and January 1st, 
this happened to Manasseh. When he was in affliction, he besought the Lord and humbled himself greatly. That was his New Year's resolution. He humbled himself greatly and he prayed and, and he was entreated by the Lord. And God heard his New Year's resolution. He heard his supplication and brought him back again to Jerusalem and he got his kingdom back. He was completely restored. Yes. That's what a New, new Year's resolution will do for you. Yeah. Nebuchadnezzar made one. Oh, yeah. He had, just like Manasseh, he was bigger. My God, he's walking along the temple walls, walking over, looking at everything, staring out at the countryside. He goes, my God, look what I've done here. I have built this. I made this. I did that. I did this. I did that. I did that. Well, the prophet Daniel had already told him, hey, dude, you need to change. You need to repent. You know, whenever I tell people they need to change or repent and they don't do it, I don't get down in the dumps about it too much because it happened to Daniel. Well, if Daniel's going to come talk to you and say, hey, you need to change and repent, and they don't do it, it's going to happen to me. I'm not Daniel. I sound like him tonight, but I'm not Daniel. Well, the king said, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go, I, I built this, I built it. Well, guess what happened? Guess what happened? The Holy Spirit pulled away his covering from the king. And if you step out from under the covering of the Lord, you are eligible to be destroyed by demons. Well, they took this guy huge. He developed a mental illness called lycanthropy. That is an illness where a person thinks they're an animal. And it's where the, uh, the fable or the myth of Wolfman came from. He thought he was an animal. And for seven years, he lived like an animal, eating grass, walking around on all fours. Yeah, he turned into a walking, crawling piece of garbage. You ever met anybody like that? I have. I mean, this was ugly. And it went on for seven years until December 31st. Suddenly, on Daniel 4, he made a New Year's resolution. Look at this. At the end of the days, I lifted up my eyes to heaven and my understanding returned to me. That's going to happen to you tonight. Your understanding is going to return to you. And I bless the Most High. That's a good New Year's resolution. And I praised and honored Him who lasts forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion from generation to generation. Wow. Nebuchadnezzar made a New Year's resolution. Guess what happened to him? He was restored. At the same time, my reason returned to me. I got my kingdom back. My honor and my brightness returned to me. He wasn't crawling around out in the pasture somewhere eating grass anymore, thinking he was a goat. My counselors and my lords sought me, and I was established in my kingdom. My excellent majesty was added to me. God gave him a bigger kingdom after he was mentally ill than he had before he was mentally ill. That's right. You lost a lot of stuff last year. The thief stole a bunch of stuff. But this year, it's coming back to you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, you picked up demons years ago and lost your anointing. This year, sevenfold return of it. Some New Year's resolutions are good ones. This was a good one. All right. Oh, Brother Paul made a New Year's resolution. <clears throat> wow, it was fantastic. Saul was a serial killer. 
he was very much like militant Muslims. And a militant Muslim in his mind sees me killing you because you are not a follower of Allah as a logical behavior. Here in America it's called murder and you can go to prison for it. Okay, but in that environment that they're raised in, their minds see that as a logical activity. It's natural. Because since you don't follow Allah, you are his enemy. And I, as a defender of Allah, am required to do something about you. And so if I have to kill you, that's okay. It's part of the system. It's all good. Right? To them, it's illogical. It makes sense to them to murder someone. Correct? If you're a Palestinian and you blow up a bus with a bunch of kids on it, that's a logical activity. It makes sense because those kids are living on land that Allah gave to us. You are trespassing on our land and you are not supposed to be there and we are supposed to drive you off that land. It's not unusual for them to think that way. That's how they think. That's logical to do it. Paul thought it was, Paul was like a militant Muslim. He said, listen, you Christians are trying to destroy Judaism. And I am a minister of Jehovah, Yahweh, and you're trying to ruin our religion. You're destroying our religion. You're taking converts out of our religion. In Islam, if you convert to Christianity, you get excommunicated. You get shot. You get something. And that's a logical behavior to shoot someone. If you dishonor your family in Sharia law, you are allowed to kill your kids. You say, oh, that's horrible. No, it's logical. That's their system and that's how they think. You dishonored our family and we're going we're to kill you. Here, and here in America, that's murder. Okay, we can't have Sharia law here because those are all felonies. But in their system, it seems perfectly reasonable to do something like that. It seemed reasonable to Paul. He went to the Sanhedrin. He got these letters. He was traveling to murder some more Christians. He killed them. He would take them into prison. He would torture them. He would get confessions from them. Just like, just like, you know, what goes on now, right? We, we did that in the Gulf War, in the Iraqi War. You know, waterboard somebody. We're trying to get information out of them. It's just another thing. It's how they think. I couldn't waterboard anybody. Because to me, it's not how I think. It's not, that's not normal to me to waterboard somebody. I, I, I couldn't do it. I've met some people I would have liked to have waterboarded, but I don't have that mindset to waterboard people. Well, in the military, they, it was just like another thing. They weren't, they weren't, it's just logical. We got to get the information out of this guy, so let's waterboard him. And they did it too. They Different types of torture. All governments have used torture throughout the centuries. It's just like another thing. It's just, that's how you think. It's just part of the business. So Paul was just going to Damascus to arrest, torture, murder other born-again Christians. It was like a no normal thing for him. Correct? But then on the way... He runs in, he gets converted. Yep, and God converted him himself. Didn't send a minister to do it. That's happening right now in the Middle East. There's all kinds of reports coming out of the Middle East of Muslims seeing visions of Jesus and all kinds of incredible things going on. All, a lot of them are converting to Christianity. It's wild. And since they won't receive a minister, 
the Holy Ghost just went in on his own. You can stop a minister, but you can't stop the Holy Ghost. Nobody can stop him. He, Paul couldn't. Boom. He sees the light. He falls out of his chariot. He says, what do you want me to do, Lord? Listen, when you fall out of your chariot, that's the perfect response. That's exactly what you should say. When tough times come looking for you, you fall out of your chariot and you ask, Lord, what do you want me to do? Because nothing happens to you by chance. There's no such thing as chance or luck or fate in Christianity. They don't exist. Everything that happens to you, something's going on in the spirit world that triggered it. Something good, something bad, something here, something there. Something's happening. And you need to use your discernment and your investigation skills to figure out what happened. Everything that happens to you has already been pre-seen by the Spirit of the Lord. He already saw it. What do you want me to do, Lord? What a great response. Couldn't been any better. Well, the serial killer, he falls. You know the story. They took him by the hand. They took him to a little apartment. And then three days, he was out of sight. He did not eat or drink. He went on what we call a Paul fast. And those are the toughest ones to go on. I went on at one time and liked to died. I liked it died. I made it through the first two days, but in the middle of the night, about two in the morning, I got up. It wasn't good. I had the shakes. And I wasn't Elvis. I mean, it was... I got out of bed. <clears throat> I'm holding the wall, heading for my salvation at the time. We call them refrigerators. I got down the refrigerator, looked up to heaven and said, Lord, please forgive me, for I know not what I do. Grab the milk. Grab the milk. But it was about two in the morning and ended that fast. Yes. It almost ended me. But I believe during this fast here, something special happened. I can't prove it, but this is my personal belief. I think that's where he went through deliverance. I think Paul had legions of demons in him. He was a cold-blooded, he was a serial killer. I'll tell you, every serial killer known to man has had legions of demons. Have you ever seen them interviewed on TV? You can spot them just instantly. They got a look about their face of total evil. They have eyes that stare right through you. They are loaded with demons. Murder spirits. I believe Paul had those. Paul had them. And worse. He had religious demons coming out of the yin yang. This guy was chucked to the gills. With demons. How could he not be? I mean, who, who doesn't have demons that murders other people? What are you talking about? Of course they have them. What are you, stupid? If you don't have demons, you're murdering people. How in God's name do you get a demon? What do you, you got to do? 9-11? That's the only time you get a demon? That's stupid. This guy was loaded with Satan. Loaded. Yeah. I think that's when he got delivered on that three-day... No water, no food, fast. When he was all alone, it was just him and the Lord. I really do. I can't prove it, but that's my own theory. Well, anyway, when he got out of there, Ananias came to see him. He said, Brother, Paul, Brother Saul, ha, he hadn't even met the guy yet. He'd been talking to the Lord about him and already knew he was saved. He had gotten saved before Ananias got there. Because he called him Brother Paul. Meaning that they were brothers in Christ. Because Ananias had told the Lord, hey, I don't want to go over there. The guy's a serial killer. I'll get killed. He says, time out. I've chosen. He's a chosen vessel. You are chosen by God when other people didn't want to be around you. And you didn't see it. You can be chosen by God and nobody else will ever notice it. He told the nice, hey, this is a chosen vessel. 
A serial killer? You've got to be kidding me. Because he's a serial killer. Grace has no limitations. This sounds nut, but nuts, but Hitler could have been saved. He could have been saved. I'm not even joking. He could have, that's how powerful the blood is. You could kill 10, billion, 10 million people. Hitler made Paul look like a Sunday school teacher, shuffling cups of milk to kids. Hitler was like off the hook evil. He could have been saved. The blood of Jesus has no limitations. Hitler could have been a chosen vessel. The Jew killer. He was a Christian killer. Hitler was a Jew killer. Along with everything else. He killed everybody. Wasn't just Jews. Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you sent me that you might receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Now how in God's name could somebody get filled with the Holy Ghost with that kind of a background? That's unbelievable. That's crazy. You mean Jeffrey Dahmer could have been preaching and healing everybody in prison? Yes. You mean Ted Buddy could have, could have been a Holy Ghost preacher? Are you kidding me? That don't make any sense. The gospel of God is good news and it doesn't make sense. It's spiritual. Spiritual things don't make any sense. That's why they call them miracles, honey. A miracle don't make any sense. You can ask your doctor all about a miracle. It doesn't make any sense. He's shoveling through the books. He's lost. Why? They don't teach miracles at medical school, Jack. That's why they call them miracles, son. They are unexplainable. They don't make any sense. But we love them anyway. Immediately, so if he had scales on his eyes, unbelievable. Well, that was a miracle right there. He had scales put on his eyes like contacts. Divine contact lenses. Click. Only these didn't work. If you get those kind of contact lenses, you immediately go back to your optometrist and say, hey, give me my $600 back. I can't even see out of these. What he was doing there was giving him physical blindness so he could spiritually see. You had, you had it in 2018. You had trials and tribulations and disappointments and people betrayed you. What was God allowing that to happen for? He was allowing it so that you could see in the spirit world. He was asking you to overcome something, make a sacrifice. Because he's leading you somewhere because you are also a chosen vessel. Exactly like Paul? No, everybody's got their own ministry tailor-made to that unique person, just like fingerprints. But the call and the cho choice is the same. You've been chosen by God for something. You have. He arose and was baptized. God wants you to have a New Year's resolution. Nebuchadnezzar's, his was the bomb. Manasseh's, wow, that was something. Paul, oh, his New Year's resolution, that was off the hook. He said, what you want me to do, Lord? That was the best one of all. You're supposed to have one. Well, which one should I have? Well, thanks for asking. I found one for you. If you turn to the book of Romans, and you read the first few chapters, you would be reading the most spectacular information you'll ever read. It was off the hook great, divinely great. You learned that the law of Moses was replaced by the law of faith. You learned that works didn't justify you. You were justified by faith. You learned that with the blood of Christ, you were no longer judged by God. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are now in Christ. You learned that your sins were judged at Calvary by God. And that you were justified and sent free. There were so many great doctrines in the book of Romans. It was amazing. He taught about all kinds of wonderful things, didn't he? 
The difference between Ad, the first Adam and the second Adam was in there. Fantastic material. Sin Adam. The second Adam. Righteousness. How we got sin and how we died was in that book. Wow, it was interesting. How we live is in that book. That was even more interesting. You are no longer judged by God. Your sin was judged at Calvary. That was in Romans. What an incredible thought. Yeah, you grew up with a rejection demon from your mom and dad. Both your parents were crazy. You picked up rejection and low self-esteem and insecurity and so on. Not anymore. Not when you read them chapters. Uh -uh. There's no room for low self-esteem anymore. You've been justified by faith. You stand before God innocent of anything you ever did. You are no longer guilty in the eyes of God. you got to be kidding me. Is that real? That's real. This is the serial killer turned Christian telling us this. Pretty good teaching from a serial killer. And then chapter 8. The mind-boggling chapter of Romans. That chapter is so shocking, it's unbelievable. Shocking. The Holy Ghost prays for you, intercedes for you with groanings that cannot be uttered. Wow. Where the Holy Ghost is, God is. He's here tonight. And he likes to show off. Well, after you got through that, all those incredible things, all those new incredible doctrines, Paul wrote Romans to the Gentiles. He wrote Hebrews to the Jews. A lot of the material was basically corresponding. Fantastic material. Hebrews is so great, it's unreal. It is off the hook amazing. Well, he says, hey, after all these doctrines, I want you to do something. Here's your New Year's resolution. And here's what you're going to do. You're all going to do it. For 2019, you're all going to do it. This is your New Year's resolution. Paul said, I beg you, my brethren, by the judgments and commandment, no, by the mercy of God, that you... Present this crappy body of yours. This body has gotten you into more trouble and brought more hell to your house than anything on this planet. Your body sucks. It has caused you nothing but trouble. First of all, it stinks. It has to be maintained and cleaned. When I was young, I thought nothing of trimming my toenails. It was no big deal. Now I'm in my 60s. My feet are morphing into some strange alien life form. <laughs> your body gets old. It wears out. It's ugly. It gets fatty. Your body gets stupid. It's all that. In addition to that, it has a mind of its own. It wants things God does not want. It craves things God does not want. It wants food and sex and comfort and feelings. All of them are contrary to the power and the word of God. All of them will ruin your anointing and steal your destiny from you. Your body is your enemy. Paul said, I beat my body and I bring it into subjection. Lest after having preached to others, I should become a castaway. Beat your what? What are you talking about? My body. Because my body sucks. Your body's your enemy. It'll make you feel things you're not supposed to feel. It craves stuff God does not crave. It wants things and wants it now. Your body won't mind. It's like a puppy. You ever had a puppy? Yeah. Don't pee on your feet. Seriously, I'm not even joking. You can't even believe a dog would pee on your feet. It's unbelievable. 
You can't control a puppy. Sit, stand, go over there. They don't listen to you. They wag their tail. They run over there. Then they poop. Then they come over here. They're all over the place. Your body's all over the place. Your body is your enemy. Your body wants to kill you. You're not listening. Your body is trying to kill you. Your body craves food that is bad for you. Yeah. It wants you to eat nothing but sugar. It craves hooch, alcohol, drugs, every god-awful thing on the planet. Your body is the evil enemy of you. Your body has a mind of its own. It wants to do what it wants, when it wants. It teaches you to live by feelings, which destroys your spirituality and wrecks your ministry and ruins your life. When you're young, your body wants sex all the time. Give me sex! I want orgasms. Drum! You got in more trouble when you were younger having orgasms than we can even list tonight. Yes, it was, it was pure hell. And then you got tired of having orgasms with that person. Then you went to that one. Then you went to that one. Pretty soon you got so many demons running around your body. Now your body's really got a mind of its own. Now the demons are pushing your body. Demons love your body. Demons like your body. They use your body to destroy you. Take this. Smoke that. Taste that. Eat that. Do that. Paul said, hey, my brethren... My family, listen to me. We're all brothers and sisters. I'm begging you, he says. I'm begging you, beseeching you. Present your body. Present your individualized piece of crap. This thing that is your enemy and will drive you to hell. Present your body. What? Number one, a living sacrifice. Paul explained it in Romans. Hey, the blood of Jesus replaced the blood of bulls and goats and calves. We don't use that anymore. We have one high priest who entered into the heavenlies once to obtain eternal redemption for us. We don't have a priest on this earth. We don't need a priest anymore. I don't need any more sacrifices of goats and bulls. I had one sacrifice. God's incredible son. Therefore, Take your body. And instead of an animal sacrifice, spiritually, you sacrifice your body to God. What do sacrifices mean? It means pure terror to American Christians. Sacrifice. As soon as you mention it, American Christians start panicking. They get sweaty palms. They have a sweat dripping down the crack in the back. And they go, oh, oh my God, I got to sacrifice something. Well, I got to get back to Hillsong. Well, I need Hillsong. Give me, a, give me a song. Give me a laser show. <laughs> no, friend, the Bible says, present your body as a sacrifice. You know what a sacrifice is? Nobody does. It's something you give to God. Yet your body is saying, Oh, don't do that. I want that. Your body's like a two year old. Give me that. Why is Paul doing it? Oh, he's divinely inspired. He knows that if your body is not brought into subjection to God, your body, your mortal enemy, will take you places you'll wish you'd have never gone. Amen. Amen. Sexually, physically, emotionally, mentally, your body runs out of control. So Paul's saying, hey, I had to beat my body to bring it into subjection. I wasn't about to let my body ruin my call from God. Because I made a New Year's resolution. I said, what do you want me to do, Lord? One of the things the Lord told him was, we're going to turn your body as a living sacrifice. I want you fasting three days, no food, no water. What was that? His body being subjected to God as a living sacrifice. Suicide is something that makes God sick to his stomach. That's not the kind of sacrifice God wants you to make. 
He wants you to make a living sacrifice, not a dead one. The only way to do that is to make sacrifices. Oh my God, Brother Mike's talking about sacrifices. Oh, can't you bring up something a little happier than that? How about a teaching on Ebola? <laughs> Why? So your body can be what? Hagias. Instead of using it for sex and drugs, and you now use it for God's call because you are a chosen vessel Amen. to God. This is your vessel. The first thing the Holy Ghost did was fix Paul's body. So he, from personal experience, is writing this to us as a blessing because he already went through it. You're to be a living sacrifice, not an animal sacrifice. You lay your body down on the altar to God. Not to be slaughtered, but it's spiritual. It's symbolic. Don't you see it? Your body is now not your, you're not your own anymore. You were bought with a price. You got to stop living for yourself. You got to stop obeying your body. Your body tells you, here, eat these cakes and eat that, drink that, smoke that. Wait a minute. Jehovah told Paul, you're not eating and smoking anything. I want three days, no food, no water. What am I going to do? Bring my body into subjection as a chosen vessel. Hagias. Holy, separated to God. Paul's fantastic. What does Eurarstus mean? Well, it's something you do that's pleasing to God. Okay. When I was living in sin, hey, I'm drinking, I'm whoring myself around, I'm chasing the almighty buck, I'm doing this and doing that. I'm using my body for all kinds of things the devil told me to use it for. I didn't even know there was a devil telling me to do it. I was just reacting to my body. Whatever I felt I needed, I went, that's what I did. I wanted to go to happy hour. Boop. I wanted to get a buzz. Ah. I wanted a girlfriend. Ah. I wanted to chase money. Ah. I just did it. My body was just doing what I wanted to do. Just a regular sinner. Body running amok. Oh, boy. Now your body does those things that please your heavenly Father. That's a switch, isn't it? That's, a, that's amazing. That's a good New Year's resolution. I'm going to use my body to please my heavenly Father. Yeah. Nope, you're not getting up at 2 in the morning and taking a 10-minute porn break anymore. See, your hands are clicking to... You're not doing that anymore. Because you're sacrificing your chosen vessel to God and you're going to stop letting the devil use your body to do things that are wrong. Yeah, you're going to stop taking drugs. Oh, God, don't go there. You're going to stop taking drugs. You're going to stop drinking. You're going to stop using your body, and you're going to switch as a living sacrifice. Now you're going to do what's pleasing to God with your vessel. Because your vessel hasn't been cast away. It's been chosen by God. Logikos, what does that mean? It makes sense. I get it. I just read Romans 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Oh yeah, it makes sense now. I should sacrifice my body. Oh yeah, I was, my whole mindset was off before. This is your reasonable, sir. It's the reasonable, logical thing to do. Verse 2. Sukematizo. What does that mean? Following the pattern of somebody else. That's very popular with American Christians. They, re, they, they follow somebody else's they see them doing it, so they do it. They did it, so they did it. 
I did it when I was living in sin. Oh, yeah. I would read biographies or autobiographies of famous people. I would try to repeat things that worked. I would try to stop doing things that didn't work, usually failed. Paul says, hey, don't act like the world and repeat their behaviors with your body. That's what the world does with your body. They drink it up, they smoke it up, they food it up. No, you're going to be different. You're going to change. You're going to take your body, a living sacrifice to God, and you are not going to pattern your activities after this rotten age of sin. You're going to pattern it by doing what? By metamorpho... Oh, by morphing your mind into the mind of Christ. Okay. It's funny, when you're, when you're down and out physically, you seem to hear better spiritually. You ever notice that? It just happened to me recently. I was kind of tuning into the good Lord while I was in the hospital dying. It was wonderful. It was so wonderful, I almost asked to go back to the hospital. Yeah. 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 I didn't quite get there. See, morphing means to, you know, like a caterpillar. Butterfly. See? And grace covers this process. See, you can't take your body and do everything perfect with it like that. You can't take your mind and think everything perfect like that. That's not possible. Humans can't do that. So grace covers it, allowing you to gradually morph into the mind of Christ. Transformed is a process you go through, and God doesn't expect you to do it all now. It includes your failures. It includes the backsliding. There's grace to cover this entire project. Amen. Why? So you can, Dakamazo, test God's will for your life. He wants you to test everything. Remember John said, test the spirits, Dakamazo, whether they be of God or not. Remember Apostle John? He was an expert. Test what? Test and see if this is good. I just talked to a lady tonight in my office. She got approached by some guy years ago who wanted to marry her. And he was 20, 25 years older than her. And of course he wanted to marry her. You know, Duh. Who wouldn't want a, a nice-looking trophy wife? Uh, my wife uh, didn't want one. She wanted a trophy husband. And I explained to this woman, I saw through the thing instantly, because I had been there a hundred times before. I said, hey, that whole thing was a trick. That was Satan sent you that man. He told that man he wanted to marry you. He told him to cause a disruption in your family. He told so, she, so the whole thing turned into a nightmare. And everything got so bad she didn't marry the guy. And I explained to her, listen, you were sad about that whole process and how bad it went. Actually, it was the best thing that ever happened to you. You ought to see how many people come into my office who didn't do that and did marry him. They're ready to hang themselves. I said, you should be rejoicing out of all those bad things that happened to you. Her eyes lit up. She, you know, she could have had a V8. It was right there. <laughs> Acceptable, same Greek word we used before. Well-pleasing to God. You can determine if something is good, if it pleases God, and teleos is within God's perfect or complete will. Because that is your deepest desire in your heart. You would like to find God's perfect will for your life. 
Because that's the best spot to be in for any Christian. It's the ultimate goal to find God's perfect will. But you can't do that if you don't sacrifice your body as a living sacrifice. You can't do that if you don't make sacrifices. You can't do that if you won't change how you think, how you behave, your attitudes. You mean I got to change my attitude? Hold on a minute, Brother Mike. Just hold on. Put that gun down. I understand that's nuts. But if you don't change your attitude and morph into the attitude of Christ, you're going to die broke, sick, and stupid. Probably in that order. Romans 12. I say through the grace of See, before he said the mercies of God, following this, he left Judaism and left the law of Moses. Now he preaches grace and mercy. Notice that? Paul the Pharisee had been transformed by the renewing of his mind and the sacrificing of his body as a living sacrifice. The grace given to me to every man among you that you should not think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. Paul went through it. Didn't he? He said, wait, hey, if anybody can think higher themselves, it's me. Look at my heritage. Look at my education. Look at my degrees. I was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. I had Pharisees looking up to me. I was the king of the Pharisees. I was more zealous than the other Pharisees. I hunted down these Christians. I murdered them. I took them to jail. I tortured them. I waterboarded them. Here's a guy who should have thought highly of himself is now the servant of all. Jesus said, anybody who wants to be great in the kingdom of God must first be the servant of all. The Greek word is doulos. It's a slave. The great Christians are the slaves. See, the last are first and the first are last in Christianity. The great people are Gates, Bill Gates. No, in Christianity, it's the ones that serving. How can I help you? What can I do for you? Can I get you something? Can I bless you with something? They, in the kingdom of God, sit here. Bill Gates sits down here near the gates of hell. Sorry to be so blunt. You must think soberly. What? Oh my God. Where's Tony Robbins when you need him? I need to get pumped up. Hillsong. Boom. No. Chill, Jack. Look at yourself reasonably. Have a reasonable view of yourself. Not in Christianity. You got to have a title to be somebody special. I'm a prophetess. I'm an apostle. Oh, really? When you hear somebody tell you they're an apostle, find a door and run out of it. <laughs> Phony or four dollar bills, get away! Think soberly, honey. Come on. What? Think soberly. That doesn't make any sense. No, it really doesn't, but it works. Think soberly and do what? Because if you think you're a big shot, you're really not. Everybody when they were born again, got the same measure, metron, portion or meter, the English word, of faith. When they got born again, bing, 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 all got the same amount. Bing, 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 bing. And then what you do with that amount is up to the free will of the person. So he started out like you with this amount. Now this person has this much faith. And this one backslid and is down to virtually nothing. But they started out the same. So Paul said, listen, these people, all of them, have a measure of faith from God. So there's no reason for you to lord it over them and think you're a great person. Everybody's loved the same. Everybody is 
cherish the same. Everybody has a measure of faith. Paul's saying, hey, think soberly. Dude, come on. Metamorpho is what? It's this. Butterflies do it. There it is. A monarch butterfly. Where do they go every year? Mexico's correct answer. You ever seen that documentary? Wow, it's spectacular. These monarch butterflies are drop dead gorgeous. And when you got 10 million of them in one spot, wow, it's awesome. Well, they morphed. They morphed from this state to that state. And it took time. You don't morph in two seconds. Bink, boom, butterfly. No, it takes time to grow in grace. It takes time to exercise your faith. It takes some time to sacrifice your body, a living sacrifice. You can't do everything overnight. And God is not mad at you at all. He understands that and gave you grace and mercy to cover it. Therefore, there is now no condemnation, no judgment to those who are in Christ. Why? You're being given grace to change. Some of you are still, you know, in this little cocoon. Well, listen, sacrifice your body tonight. Turn it over. And you'll start morphing into a monarch butterfly. I made that up, but I mean, you get the point. I'm trying. Logikos, what is that? It's your reasonable service. You sit down, you go, hey, let me think about this for a second. Okay, Romans, my God. Works, justification by works. Now it's justification by faith. Justification temporarily through the blood of bulls and goats. Now it's Eternal justification through the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm eternally justified in the eyes of God. Ten million years from tonight, I am still perfect in God's eyes. Really? Wow, that's something to get excited about. That's something to make you want to sacrifice your body as a living sacrifice. It motivates you. My God, this is so good. I, got, I need more of it. I want more of it. It makes sense to do it this way. Why is it logical? Well, Romans 8. I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, that's Kairos, that's a season, see? What's Paul saying there? Well, when you sacrifice your body as a living sacrifice, there's going to be seasons where you're going to have hardships. Okay? Pathema means emotional pain over certain things that happen, okay? For example, uh, he told the church, look, now don't, don't sit around weeping and crying over these uh, Christians that are dead. Don't do that. Don't go into a long mourning like we did in Judaism. We mourn the dead for days and weeks. And months. Don't do that anymore. They're better off than you are. Stop doing that. What was he trying to do? lessen the emotional hardship of loved ones who've been martyred or murdered or killed or what have you. We have it today. They're not being martyred or murdered, but people die unexpectedly. Yeah, that hurts like heck. Okay. But if they're born again Christians, they're more fortunate than you are. You're still stuck down here with this piece of crap. <laughs> they're not. They're rolling down the streets of gold. Your relatives wouldn't come back here if, they, if you asked them to. If God asked them to, you want to go back and see your relatives? What? Thanks, I'll stay here in the mansion. Yeah. You go back to South Phoenix and see your friends? God never asks any Christians that in heaven. You know why? He doesn't want them to think he's nuts. Nobody who's ever gone to heaven would come back in here for five seconds. They don't want to come back here. They're not even thinking about it. Well, it hurts my feelings, my mother. And you... Listen, your mother, if she was a born-again Christian, is, is so much better off than you are. It, it's a certified joke. It's ridiculous. 
If she's thinking about you at all, she's probably thinking, I wish my daughter would get killed. She might get up here. So I could see her again. I want to show her this mansion and that street of gold. I got stuff I want to show my baby. That's what she's thinking. If she's thinking that. Jeez. Pathema. Emotional pain. You get emotional pain over things. Okay? That's what he's talking about here. Over hardships. And listen, it's only seasonal. It's not going to last. If somebody dies in your family and they come to see me for counseling and they've been mourning for two years, that's demonic. That's a spirit of heaviness got into that person's body. Now they're chronically depressed. Hey, that's demonic. It's not normal. It's abnormal. What Paul's saying here is, listen, no matter what you go through, it's temporary. It's seasonal. Seasons change. So be encouraged to know it's not permanent. Then he says, it is not worthy to be compared with the glory. Apocalypto means what? It's the revelation. The last book in the Bible is named after that Greek word. It's the unveiling. It's the pull the blinds back. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. I looked in the mirror. I don't see a lot of glory there. Listen, that's a season of looking in the mirror. In the end, you are in nothing but glory from God. That's where you're headed. So the hardships you have here are seasonal. They're temporary. What Paul's telling you, he's trying to encourage you that you will be revealed. You, not something material. Don't you see it? Here's how it works. The devil claimed you. Yeah, he claimed your family. He claimed you. He claimed your kids. When they get saved and born again, they become the glory of God. Why? Because the Holy Ghost moves into each individual Christian in their spirit, man. And that's where the glory of God is. It's the Holy Ghost. In the Old Testament, the kabod glory would fall in the temple. The priests would crash on the floor or run out the door. What was that? That was the Holy Ghost descending. The Holy Ghost is the glorious presence of Jehovah. Living in there, living in there, living in there. It's seasonal. This outer vessel here will be gone someday and nothing but glory will remain in you forever. Yeah. It's going to be revealed in you. Revelation. For our light affliction, which is, again, what? It's always temporary. Works for what? <clears throat> A more exceedingly <laughs> glory. The more you overcome... The more you change, the more you serve, the greater your glory in heaven. That's right. The Bible teaches that each person gets their own distinct separate reward in heaven. Nobody gets somebody else's reward. Some people get lots of rewards. Some people hardly get any. You are not the hardly get any group, okay? This is your New Year's resolution. I'm not going to be in the hardly get any group. When you go to heaven, your goal is to be loaded. You don't want to just squeak into heaven. You know, that, that's not your call. You're not a chosen vegetable. Squeak in and barely get by. No. No, you're to roll with glory. That's what you're supposed to be doing. But you're not going to be able to do it if you don't make a sacrifice, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your logical, reasonable service. Translation, it makes sense to sacrifice because the glory is more exceedingly.
Can you imagine going to heaven, sitting there, going over your life with the Lord, thinking, my God, why didn't I change earlier? Oh, my Lord, why didn't I give there? Why didn't I step up there? Why didn't I do that? What was I thinking? Oh, I hadn't sacrificed my body. I kept kept my body. That's what I did. Oh, the thing ran me around. The thing dominated me. My body. Oh, my body. I hate its guts. It robbed me of incredible glory in eternity. And there's no way to get it back. Once you die, friend, you're done. You're done when you die. You don't go to heaven and get on a work program or OJT project. No. No, it's not there. What you do in this life is all that matters. You don't get a second chance. When you go to hell and you're burning there, you don't get a second chance. You don't get out. When you go to heaven, you don't get a second chance to add to your glory and fix the mistakes you made in your past. It's over. When you die, you're done. Which is why you have to sacrifice now while you're still alive. Let's do it now, quickly. Let's get it done quickly. Because you ain't getting any younger, honey. We do not look at the things which are seen. See, people who have made this sacrifice and have renewed their mind, they don't see things carnally or physically anymore. They see into the spirit world. They see temporal things. They see eternal things. They know the difference called discernment. The things which are seen are proskyros, seasonal for a specific period of time. These chairs. See that chair? That's a Sam's Club special. Yes, sir. Comfortable. You can sit your butt down in that thing and it doesn't matter how wide it is, it just feels good. <laughs> Those chairs, believe it or not, are not going to heaven with me. They're going to burn. That's, that's a temporal thing. That's a seasonal thing. I am looking past these chairs to an eternal thing. The person sitting in the chair is what God's interested in. That's who he wants to heal and deliver, not the chair. Eternal things are ionious. What's that mean? Ageless. Ageless. It never ends. That chair will end. You will never end. And this chair is more comfortable than you are. <laughs> now, some of you got bad personalities. Those chairs are good. Eternal things never end. My God, can you believe that? Never end? What does that mean? I don't, don't really know, but I know it's a long time. I'm trying to get it, but I, that's a, it's too much for me. Why is it logical? Hebrews chapter 12. Let's close with this, shall we? Hebrews chapter 12 says, Seeing we are compassed about, it means surrounded, by... A great cloud of witnesses. What witnesses? The super saints in chapter 11. Remember the chapter of faith? Moses. King David. All the great men and women of God. They were all in chapter 11. So Paul says, now listen, Messianic Jews and Christians, listen to this. In light of those people, do this. Seeing we're surrounded by those people, the heroes of faith, people who sacrificed their bodies as a living sacrifice. These people who renewed their mind, they morphed their mind into the mind of Christ. These people that did it, chapter 11, they made sacrifices. They saw themselves circumspectly. They were servants of God, not big shots. These people, in light of that, 
you do what? Lay aside every ankus, every burden. All these burdens. This word was used when you were unloading a trailer or a truck or something. You push stuff off. You get rid of it. God's calling you to get rid of your temporal, carnal, seasonal burdens and step into an eternity of glory. He's asking you, can't you see it? No, you don't see it with these eyes. Do you, can you see it spiritually? Do you have any discernment here to see there? Wow. You can see how insane the prophetic movement is. You need to take a trip to heaven and see this and see that. Paul's not talking about that. This is a walk of faith, friends. You don't get trips to heaven every Monday. Yeah. Some of the prophetesses and apostles, they get trips to heaven every Monday, but those are familiar spirit trips. You don't want to take a trip like that. So you want to walk by faith, not by sight. You want to renew your mind and make sacrifices. You want to take this body and make it a slave to God. Do you want to know what slavery in your body is? Talk to any addict. Pick any one of them out. They'll explain it to you. A, B, C in detail. What it's like your body to be a slave to the devil. They have these horrible cravings they can't get rid of. Why? This burden that you're carrying, burden from your family, burden from your ex, burden from your kids, oh God, oh, I just weighs you down. It wears you out. You'll never see your glory if you don't get these burdens out tonight. They're not worth keeping. They're robbing you of an incredible eternity. I talked to a guy one time in a bar and he said to me, oh, I, I don't care. I just want to squeak into heaven. I was half drunk at the time. It seemed reasonable. <laughs> no, fool. You don't want to sneak into heaven. You want to come roaring in with a band playing. Because you made sacrifices here. Instead of seeing yourself as a lofty person, you became a servant to the Most High God. You racked up the rewards and glory nobody ever saw. You didn't see them, but by faith you know they're there. Sacrifices have to be made, mister. If you sacrifice to the devil, he'll pay you temporarily. Then he will come back to collect. He will rot your life out. He'll give you a sickness. He will destroy you. You sacrifice yourself to God. You're racking up glory you can't even believe. Ancus. Oh, God, I'm glad I got that off of me. Get these shoes. Oh, God. Everybody burdened down has got this uh, internal exhaustion in their soul. Just wear them. Oh, God. They're living with somebody that doesn't, runs their mouth like a busted chain. Oh, I got to listen to that again. Oh, God. There he goes. It's like a burden. It's down. Hey, the Holy Ghost is telling you, hey, dump that thing on the cross of Calvary. I'll give you a new attitude. I'll renew your mind. I'll change how you see your environment. I'll fight for you. The sin, the sin, the sin so easily does what? Eupharistathus. What does that mean? Cause you to stand around when you should be doing something. You ever seen people on a street corner? They're, you ever seen somebody that doesn't know where they're going? And they're, she's like, I mean, wasn't it down here? Didn't you say what? These little petty sins in your life have to be sacrificed tonight. Yes. Because they're going to keep you standing around instead of fulfilling your destiny for God. You've been called. You are a chosen vessel 
not to stand around and do nothing. Oh, Because when you stand around, you start to develop demonic assets. Did you know that? One of them is self-pity. <laughs> oh, God. I don't believe this. As <laughs> soon as self-pity sets in, you're finished. It's over. You can kiss your goodbye. <laughs> Self-pity is a cancer to a Christian. Because you can't have any if you got the Holy Ghost. There is no such thing as self-pity in his world. He's always winning. Yeah. Winning! If you stand around doing nothing, you'll get depressed. Oh my God, the spirit of heaviness sets in. When depression sets in, oh wow, it's, it's like torture. Every day you get up. It's like Rodney Dangerfield. I wake up in the morning, hello heaviness. I know you're there. The heaviness talks to me, he said. Oh, you're going you're gonna to get it today. You're not to be Rodney Dangerfield. Are you? No. Rodney never sacrificed, made a sacrifice of his body as a living sacrifice to the Lord. He had chronic depression all of his life. His mother rejected him when he was a kid. His dad ran out on him. The guy grew up in depression. That wasn't an act. He just made fun of it and made money off it. That really happened to him. He was a very sad, sick person. He was an incredibly funny person, but he was, people laugh all the time to cover their inner pain. That's like a normal thing. That little sin that's getting you. There's a little thing there. Sometimes it's just a little sin. It's just a little bitterness. Just a, a little ought. It could be something little. Those things are extremely dangerous. They take your attention. They cause you to feel bad about yourself. They distract you from glory where you're supposed to be going. And then what does he want you to do? Run with hupomone, endurance, the race that is set before us, he said. Therefore, endure hardness. Kekopatheo means what? Difficult emotional times. Okay? When Paul was being beaten and whipped and everything, he wasn't enjoying it. That's not what God's saying. I want you to become a masochist and enjoy pain. Okay? That's for perverts. Yeah, it hurts to be beaten. It hurts to have to lose, uh, learn a lesson. Yeah, everybody gets that. We're all the same. Stuff hurts. Okay? And it causes emotional pain as well. Is what he's saying here. But he's saying here, if you watch that uh, movie uh, with uh, Tom Hanks, uh, the war movie, Ryan, Private Ryan, what was the name of that movie? Saving Private Ryan. You know, it's like a soldier in that movie. These guys were wounded and hurt and so on. They would patch themselves up and go. Correct? Well, Paul's saying that's exactly what we're looking at here. Spiritually. The devil beat you here. He hurt you here. This person died. That money was lost. They cheated you. They betrayed you. Yes, God knows that. He saw that coming before it hit. Now he wants to restore you. But you got to get rid of that besetting sin. See? Yeah, it could be any, it could be any little thing. See? Uh, people that are married have terrible trouble with besetting sins. It's just awful. Because when they get tired of their spouse... They don't want to hear their voice anymore. And so the spouse says to them something, something unoffensive, something innocuous. Can you pass me the mustard? Okay! You know, and the person overreacts because they're so sick of hearing that person's voice that it triggers this emotional pain. Is this making sense? That little besetting sin is going to cost you your destiny if you don't turn that over to God and get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Christians are getting sucked into politics now. They're developing horrible ought against 
the other party. You're not called to be a politician. That's not your job. You are to be a servant of the Most High God. You are to renew your mind and turn your body over as a living sacrifice to God. You're not to be fighting over Trump and Schumer and all the rest of these losers. That's not your call in life. That's the devil doing that. He'll play that out. You need to play out your glory and develop an exceeding, more exceeding weight of glory. That's your job. Not to take offenses at Pelosi. Stands up, blah, 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 blah. Can't even, she can't even talk. That's not your job to say, oh, that woman's crazy, she's nuts. Just leave her alone. Let her mumble on. You focus on your glory and getting rid of that besetting sin. Yeah. I hey, hate Trump. He, like, he hates Mexicans. Hey, that's Trump's business. That's Mexico's business. You're to be a servant of God. That ain't none of your business. See, you got your nose stuck in places the devil's cheering you on with. Oh, yeah, get involved in that. Oh, that ain't right there. Abortion's horrible, isn't it? The devil comes to Christians and tells them, hey, abortion's terrible, isn't it? Well, you need to, come on, get fired up. It's a trick. It's a trick. He's tricking you. He tells you to do something right. And he outsmarts you. Planned Parenthood, oh, I hate them. Oh, they're, they suck. Hey, listen. That's a trick of the devil. He's trying to get you jacked over Planned Parenthood. Yeah. If you focused on praying for the doctor, sucking them babies out of there, the devil will start panicking. Oh my God, you're praying for the doctor doing that? You mean I don't have to get hacked off at Planned Parenthood and pitch a fit and no, get rid of those besetting sins. That's not your job. You're a servant of the Most High God. You're a glory collector. What does it mean I have to agree with uh, Trump and Schumer and Plan Pan? No, you don't agree with any of that crap. You're a servant of God. You agree with the Lord. You do those things that are pleasing in His sight. Well, it's outrageous. What are they doing? Hey, that's a trick. The devil's trying to get you sidelined over to some issue that's never going to amount to a hill of beans. You can't change anything anyway. Well, I want to be an internet sensation. What you need to be is to think soberly of yourself and not think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. You ought to be a servant of God. If you do that, you'll be racking rewards and glory like you can't conceive nor believe. My Facebook page, nobody likes me. Well, they know you. Just drop the Facebook page. Drop it. You're a servant of God. Renew your mind. Change your body. Sacrifice your body. Renew your mind. Facebook. I ain't getting any likes on Facebook. You don't get any likes around here either, but just repent. Get rid of that besetting sin. Get your besetting sin off it. Quit it. Come on, change. This is your season of change. This is your New Year's resolution. I'm giving you the New Year's resolutions. I'm prophetic. You are to be what? A wimp? A loser? Or somebody to be a... No! A good soldier! Soldiers has been trained to fight. Soldiers can fight. Couch potato set. God, I wish Hillsong had a better... Christmas program. <laughs> oh, there's the laser lights. <laughs> Listen. That's Christian recreation. You're a soldier. You're being trained to save people's lives. You're fighting to sacrifice your body to God. You think you can just wake up and sacrifice your body to God? What are you, nuts? That takes determination. That takes prayer. That takes dedication. That takes fight. Fight back. Soldiers fight. They're trained to fight. You want to be not a beaten soldier, a, a good soldier of Jesus Christ. That's what you want. That's what you want. I know, I know you do. No man that wars, oh, wars, that's, that, that's not Christian. 
Yes, yes it is. This is a spiritual war. And in America, we're losing it. The devil's overrunning us. Because people don't read these scriptures I'm sharing with you tonight. No man in Placo entangles themselves with what? Pragmatia. Crap of this planet, this world. Nobody does it. People who are warriors don't do that. On Saving Private Ryan, they were in combat. They weren't home fixing the boat, mowing the lawn, buying a house, paying for a sea dues, fixing this, running debts up on that. You're going to waste your life in 2019 like you wasted it in 2018 if you don't receive these scriptures. That's my prophetic prediction for you. You're going to waste another year of your life. And you don't have that many years to waste. You really don't. Do what? You don't get involved with all this stuff everybody else gets involved in because you're a servant of the Most High God. You transformed your mind. You sacrificed your body as a living sacrifice. You are now a servant of the Most High God. You're a fighter and a warrior. Somebody's sick, you're going to fight for their healing. Somebody's got demon, you're going to fight for their deliverance. Your body wants to do something, you're going to fight your body. I beat my body and I bring it into subjection. That's what you're doing. You've got to fight to beat your body. This is a war. Streamers, it's a spiritual war. Are you listening to me? We're losing it in America. God's chosen you as his vessel to win in 2019. See this hummingbird? He's like an American Christian. He was flying along, focused on his own life, not watching what he was doing. Boo! He flies into a spider web. He got entangled into the cares of this life and the lust for other things. Oh, he got too busy. He was too busy thinking about something else, watching something else, flying where he was going. Oh, I'm going to go here and do that. It's me, it's me, it's me. Boom. The devil puts these little spider webs in your life. A little lust, a little fun, a little recreation, a little debt, a little credit card, a little this, a little that. And it all adds up to you keeping your besetting sins and losing your eternal destiny. And all your rewards of glory in heaven wasted because you got caught in a spider's web. That hummingbird is drop dead gorgeous. Yeah, that's right, honey. Your looks are only going to go so far. Uh-huh. Beautiful looking people get caught in the same webs the ugly ones do. Why? That he may please him who chose you to be a soldier. Well, I feel like a soldier, Mother Mike. I'm always fighting with my in-laws. <laughs> Listen, that's the besetting sin you need to get rid of. That's not a godly fight. The Holy Ghost is the one who's fighting with your in-laws. Everybody looking in goes, yeah, I see why you're fighting with them. Your in-laws are nuts. That's, I get that, and they get that, but God doesn't get it. He's telling you to renew your mind and turn your body over a living sacrifice. You are to become a good soldier of Jesus Christ. This isn't popular preaching, but it's, it's good preaching. These scriptures are effective for changing some people's lives. You are chosen to fight. You are not chosen to be a couch potato by God. Satan chose you to sit your butt down. God chose you 
to train as a soldier. Well, how do we train? You renew your mind. Your mind morphs into the mind of Christ. What else do we do? You sacrifice your body. You go through basic training. You can't go through basic training doing nothing except puttering around the internet studying religious crap. It's a waste of life, internet. Internet's a waste of life. Here's your typical home group. They're on the left there. Got a bunch of cows sitting around, looking around, <laughs> doing nothing. We have a home group, a home group in my house. And what do you do there? Oh, we read the Bible, then we pray. Oh, that's nice. It's not helping anybody. How about, how about this group here? Yeah. Yeah, you get trained as a, as a the bull of Bashan. And you start to mow down every trick and lie of the devil. Every filthy demon he ever sent. You see those guys dressed in white? Yeah. Those are called tares. Jesus called them tares. They're in the church trying to stop you. Yeah, you don't need a home group where you're standing around looking at each other, smelling each other's flatulence. No! You're to be a bull out of the gate trained to fight. That is your call from God. You've been chosen as a soldier. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're to come out of the gate with the horns flaring. You are to strip the devil of his lies and his fabrications and his delusions. You stick that horn there and rip them pants off. You expose the works of darkness. You're not that gutless pastor and that useless preacher of yours. Oh, you don't want to talk about the devil. You expose the devil. You tell people, my God, watch it. Watch out. If you talk about the devil too much, you mean glorifies him. No. No, listening to you too much glorifies the devil. I'm out of here. I'm out of this Mickey Mouse church and this stinking home group. Where are the bulls at? Where do they, they train them at? That should have been your question. We meet every Thursday at the home group. Eh. <laughs> Work. you got to be kidding. That home group? Who brought the donuts? <laughs> Get out of that crap. You need to be trained as a soldier, not working on donuts. You've been chosen by God to fight. Anybody can be a gutless loser. It takes no effort. How about you, friend? Huh? You going to take one of these resolutions that God recommended you take? I think you will. I think you will. This is 2019. You're not going to spend 2019 like you did 2018. That's not going to happen. It's not going to happen, I said. Now, I'm prophesying right now. Hey, I'm prophesying. It's not going to happen. You're going to get rid of your besetting sins. Thank you, Mike. You're going to renew your mind and morph it into the mind of Christ on God's word. Thank you, Mike. You're going to sacrifice your body as a living sacrifice to God. Holy and acceptable. That is your logical service after reading the previous chapters in Romans. Of course it makes sense. You're going to sacrifice your body and your mind for the Lord because you are storing up in heaven and even more exceedingly an eternal weight of glory. Because you have not been called to waste your life like all the other Christians in America. Ninety-something percent of them are virtually useless spiritually. It's a disgrace. It's worse in Europe. Christians are worse in Europe. Can you imagine that? 
You have not been called to that. No, you've been called, chosen by God to be a good soldier. Brother Mike, I, I never saw it that way before. Well, I was hoping you hadn't seen it that way before. I was, I was hoping I was going to be able to help you tonight. That's what I was hoping. That was my desire. You cannot stay in 2018 anymore. 2018 is eternally gone. You need to change now. You need to change right now. Like this girl here. She's going to change right now. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Come on, honey. The Holy Ghost all over you right now. Let's go. Come on. I'm going to submit my body a living sacrifice. Come on, pray now. Come on, sweetheart. See that girl there? She's ready to make the transition out of this existence of carrying around these besetting sins. See? She's ready to do it. That girl right there. And she's going to repent and change tonight and the Holy Ghost is going to come right to her. Anybody who repents and is willing to change, the Spirit of God jumps on them like you can't even believe. I mean, he's right there. Arrogant people, prideful people, people think they got it cooked. He just walks, he steps back off of them. I've seen it happen numerous times over the years. Dear Jesus, help me. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, I got besetting sins in my life, oh God. Father God, I got a besetter in my emotions, in my mind, in my family, in my job. Something's killing me. Oh God, I'm so sorry. Lord, I've been focusing on material things or carnal things and I haven't been trained as a good soldier. I want to be a good soldier. Lord, I'm not storing up rewards and greatness and glory. I'm not doing it. I'm so busy with the things of this world. The cares of this life. The lusts of other things. I'm so busy with all these different things. I've been missing out on my eternal glory. I'm so, I'm so sorry. God, help me. Please, God, forgive me. Please, God, forgive me. I, I was listening to Brother Mike tonight. Some of the stuff he said was kind of stupid, but I saw those scriptures, and those scriptures touched my heart because that was God's holy word. It's not Brother Mike. It's, it's those scriptures. I saw them and I am, to, I am to change my life. I know. I see it now. I see it now. I have besetting sins that are ruining me. They're, they're eating me. Like as Paul said, a canker, a cancer in my soul. I need to get rid of them tonight, Lord. Tonight is my night. I, my body is controlling me, Lord. It's controlling me. It tells me to eat this and smoke that and drink that and go here and go there. I am so sorry. I'm so sorry. Tonight, I'm going to submit my body as a living sacrifice to you. I have heard you. You said you chose me. You chose me. And I'm going to accept that call. I'm going to take it tonight. I'm going to take it tonight. God have mercy on me. Sweet Jesus, forgive me. God have mercy on my soul. Help me, Lord. Please help me, Lord. Please forgive me, Lord. Please forgive me. Help me. Come on, streamers. Open up your heart. Open up your heart. Just, just change. Just repent. You got a besetting sin that's gotten to you. Could be a person. It could be an emotion about a person. It could be self-pity. It could be regrets. It could be anger toward God that something bad happened to you. Somebody died in your family. You blamed it on God. Some, something bad happened to you. The foreclosure. The business bankruptcy, whatever it was, you saw it and a root of bitterness tapped into your soul and then you blamed it on God. It wasn't God that did it, it was the devil. Father wants to crush the devil under your feet shortly, like within five minutes. That's shortly, right here in five minutes. The God of peace is going to crush Satan under your feet shortly. Five minutes right here. Five minutes from now. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. Come on. Dear Jesus, I'm so sorry. Come on, you can do what I'm doing. God, I'm so sorry. Help me. Help me, help me Jesus. I, I blew it. I, I, I 
oh my God, I shouldn't have done it. I should have never talked to that person. I should have never bought that. I should have never went there. I'm so sorry. Forgive me, Father. Bail me out of this besetting sin. Bail me out of this besetting sin. I've been, I've been saved for 20 years now, and I'm still sinning. Bail me out of this sin, Lord. I should have renewed my mind 15 years ago. What am I thinking about? Father, help me. Father, help me. My, mind is, my mind's not working. Help me, Lord Jesus. Please help me, Lord. Please, dear God, please save me, Lord. Please help me. Tonight's my night. It's 2019. I'm changing now. And there's nothing the devil can do to stop me. I'm changing right now and there's nothing the devil can do to stop me. Nothing. Come on up here if you're ready to change right now. Just run, come right up here quickly. You're ready to change. Just come up the front. We're going to pray with you. Father God, forgive me and have mercy on my soul. I can't believe it. I'm drinking stuff. I'm taking stuff. I'm eating stuff. I'm going places I should not be going. I'm doing things I should not be doing. And I am not, I am not racking up eternity of glory. I'm wasting my life and wasting my time. Sweet Jesus, have mercy on my, my soul. Ministry team is going to come up real quick and help me. Thank you, Jesus. Pray harder. Dear Jesus, I'm so sorry. Say it. Just say that. Just say that. Tell him you're sorry. Tell him you're sorry. Just say it. Speak it out. Jesus, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Say it. Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry. If you have to go, God bless you. Thank you for your donations. Thank you for coming here. 2018, the revival will probably hit in 2020. Things are going to change around here fast. But you're going to change even faster. You're going to change now. Now. Your besetting sin goes now. I said now. Now. Come out of that body right now. Now, I said in Jesus' mighty name. Come out now. Come out right now. The setting sin, I command you. Come out. The demon blocking my mind. Come out. Blocking my mind. Come out of there. Give her one of those, would you? The devil blocking my mind. Come out of my head. Come out. Keep coughing. Come out, devil. Come on. There he comes. Come on out. Come out, Satan. Come out, devil. That guy. Come on right now. Come on. Here, sweetheart. Come on. What do you need? What do you need? What do you need from God? For? For what? Look this way. What'd you do? I have a lust demon. You have a what? A lust demon. Yeah, now listen. You're very pretty. You have a beautiful face. And the demons use that against the person. Whenever somebody's good looking, it draws in predators. So the, the person that's attractive becomes fish bait to the devil. He brings in ugly men. He brings in men with demons. And then when you sleep with them, they transfer in from that person. Then that person abuses you or betrays you. And then they go on to somebody else. Then the devil brings another one in for you. And it's easy for him to do because you're pretty. Do you understand? You're pretty and it's, and it's a curse. Because the devil's using your looks against you. But if you turn your life over to the Lord right now, the Holy Spirit will send you the perfect husband. Dear Jesus, I'm so sorry. Jesus, I'm so sorry. Say it. I repent of sin, lust, adultery, fornication. God, forgive me. I want every transfer spirit out of my body from these men I slept with, the men I fell in love with. I renounce it all. I renounce it all, and I command it to go right now. Come out, spirit. Come out of me, spirit. Spirit of lust, I bind your power. This lust spirit for men, for companionship, for food. Come out of that body. There he is. Come out of that body right now. Come on out. Come out of there. Just repent of it. Dear Jesus, I'm sorry. The Holy Spirit will come right to you. Help me, Lord Jesus. Please forgive me, Lord. Please forgive me, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. Have mercy. Let your tears go. Come on. Let them go, sweetheart. The Holy Spirit's right on top of you. There he is. It's the Holy Ghost. He loves you. He wants to help you. Come on, sweetie. 
Let your tears go. Come on. I know you're holding back. I understand. This is uncomfortable. You're holding back. The Spirit of God's right here for you. Nobody's looking at you but me. Come on, sweetie. What's your name? Clarissa. Larissa. Come on, sweetheart. Let that spirit out of your stomach. Come out. Yes, you're you're crying right now. Dear Jesus, help me. Come on, say it. Dear Jesus, help me. Lord, I'm so sorry. Tell him. Tell him you're sorry. The Spirit of God will come right to you. He'll come right to you. Help me, Lord Jesus. Help me, Lord Jesus. Spirit of lust, come out. Spirit of lust, come out. Come out right now. Come out. No, you just repeat after me. He'll come right out. Come on. Spirit of lust, come out of me right now. In the name of Jesus. And a girl. Come on. Come on now. Come on now. Spirit of lust, come out of there. Come out of there. Here. This girl's got lust demons. Just keep praying. Come on. Come on out. How are you doing on your self-deliverance? I'm trying to cast them out. You're trying to what? I'm trying to cast out the demon from my estimate and from See, now listen. If you don't learn self-deliverance before you go home, you're not going to make it. Now let's learn it right now. Okay? Ready? Come. Spirit, I have authority over you in the name of Jesus. And I command you to come out. Get out of my head. There he comes. Come on out. I command you to go out. I command you to go out. Come out of me. Come on out of me. Come out right now. I command you to go out. I command you to go. Get out of that body right now. Come out of there right now. Demon of fear, go. I said, come out right now. Go. Go. Come on out. Come on out. Come on out right now. Get out of my body. Get out of my body right now, I say. Come out of right now. Come out quickly. Come out quickly. Quickly. Come on, just repent of it. Come out, Satan. Come out, Satan. Get out of there. Just repent of it. Come on. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. Come on out now. What's going on here? He's got a pain in his stomach. A lot of pain in his back. No, no. He thinks because he's given, he's, 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 uh, he's going to the word of God. So he thinks he's an attack of the devil because of the word of God. Yeah, I know, but how'd but, the demons get in there in the first place? So that's what I ask him. What were you doing? No, he knows. He knows. Come out right now. Get out of that body right now. Come out of that stomach. Come out of the womb. There it comes. Keep coughing. Come out. Here it comes. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come out of that womb right now, you filthy spirit. You masturbating fool. Come out of that body right now. Hurry up. Come out right now, you pervert. Come out of there, I said. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Hurry up. Hurry up, God, buddy. Hurry up. Go. Come out of there. Come out of buddy. Right now. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Fight. Fight harder. Fight harder. Fight harder. Fight harder. Come out. Fight harder. Come on, you got the anointing. Go for it. Come on, you're a soldier. You're a soldier. Come on, fight back. You're a soldier. You're a soldier. Fight back. Fight back, you're a soldier. Come on. Don't sit there and do nothing. Fight back. Come on. If you do nothing, you'll get nothing. Did you hear me? If you do nothing, you'll get nothing. Come on. Besetting sin. Come out. Besetting sin. Come out. Um, I, th I think the Lord healed me from my sexual addiction. Seven days. 
Is it gone? Seven days. I swear, no urges. Um, yeah. It's, Hold on a minute. Yeah. How, how do you do it? How do you do it? I don't know. It's just I came here Friday, and I just I poured out my heart, and, you know, I cried. And, you know. Tony. But, I mean, I want to continue my, my you, you know, speak in tongues? Huh? No. You speak. I, I don't know. Oh, okay. Turn around. Now, just relax and repeat after me. Doshova. Korashia. Makumana. Bandoria. Vekova. Okay, now, this time you will do it again, only you add some syllables on your own. You already have your gift of tongues, you just haven't released it. It's in here in your spirit, man. You just haven't released it for some reason. Go lava. Go rasheve. Vendorama. Volava shandara voshutaravi. Any syllable. Any syllable. Add add one. Good. Perfect. Add another one. Add another one. Aroma shava. Any syllable. There's no wrong answer, so any syllable work. Korashanda Ravoshi. Velo Vatara Moshatava. Kyora Mashandoravosheda. Ola Mashandoravosimulala. Ola Mashandarava. Listen, you have the anointing right now. You have the anointing. Keep going. That's a Holy Ghost. Get the rest out. Get the rest of them out. There's one right there. Right there. Come out. There it comes. Just do it by faith. Good. Keep going. Good. Get out of that body right now. Come out of her neck. Come out of her neck. Hurry up. Satan, lose your hold. Satan, lose your hold. Get out of that body right now. Come out of there. I told you to go. Come out of her ribs. Brian, you come out right now. Brian, go. Brian, go. Brian, go. Brian, go. We forgive you. Bless you, Brian. Come out of me. Get out of my body right now. Hurry up. Come out right now. Come on out of there. Keep coughing. Keep coughing. Keep going. Come on, buddy, right now. Go. Vamanos. Sweater. Sweater. Demonian. Sweater. Come out right now. Come out right now. Evil. Get out of that body, I said. Hurry up. Satan, hurry up. She told you to go. Now do it now. Obey. Obey. Satan, get out of my body right now. Satan, come out of me. Lordana, say it. Get out of my body. Gift of hate. Gift of hate. Fight. 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 Lord Jesus, I love you. Thank you for healing me of sex. Get out, buddy. Get out of there. Come out of that body right now. Shyness. Low self-esteem. Weakness. Get out, buddy. Come out of there. Weakness. Timid. Come out. Timid. Timid, go. Timid, come out. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Come out of you. Fight harder. Come on, sweetheart. Fight. Satan, I hate you. Come out of me. Hello, Lala Mashanda. Ora Mashanda Ravore. Ura Ram. Get out of that body and come out of there quicker. Come out right now. Go. Come out faster. 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 Come out of that body right now. Hurry up. You get out. Every man that ever touched my body comes out right now. Every one of them. All of them. All of them. The liars, the betrayers. They took my stuff. They took my life. They wasted my time. Come out of me right now. Go right now. Get out of my body. Come out of my head, you filthy spirit. There it goes. Come out of me right now in Jesus' name. Come out of my feet. Come out of my lungs. Come out of my lungs, I said. Go. Come out of my lungs. 
Just fight. Fight harder. Satan, come out. Besetting sin, I command you to come out. Come out of my body right now. Ought, unforgiveness, anger, disappointment with God, anger toward God, hatred toward God. Come out! Hatred toward God, come out! Good, keep going. Weakness, cowardice. You coward, come out of there. Come out of there, you coward. Yeah, buddy. Come out, you coward. Hurry up. I command every coward demon to come out. You coward, you come out of that body right now. You coward, come out now. You coward, I say, come out. Get out of my body. Get out of my body. I'm taking command. Get out of my body. Hurry up. Come on, fight harder. Fight harder. Thank you, Jesus. Pray harder. Pray harder. Just repent. Get out of my body right now. Come out of my stomach. Come out, you pervert. Come out. I command that demon-possessed suitor to come out of me right now. Every demon from him, every curse he put on me, all of it, come out right now. Get out of my feet. Every curse from my mother, go. Mother! Mother! Hatred from my mother, I repent of it. Evil with my mother, come out. Come on out. Right now. Mother, come out. Come out, mother. Go. Get out, I said. Get out of that body right now. Come out. Deception, lying marriage, lying engagement. It's all lies. It's all fake. Come out right now. Get out of my body right in a second. Come out right now. Get out of my body. Go. Come out right now. Come out. Drinking, smoking, food, food demons. Come out. Lust for food. Lust for cigarettes. Lust. Lust. Come out right now. Come out of there. Lust. Come out. Bitterness, anger, hatred, abuse, low self-esteem, hating my parents. Get out of that body right now. Hurry up. There he goes. Keep coughing. Come out, devil. Come on out around. Go in Jesus' holy name. Just confess it. If we confess our sins, He is faithful. He is just to forgive us. And He will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Just confess it right now. Just confess it. Come out, Satan. Come out of my joints. Come out of my joints. Let your tears go. Go on. Let your tears go. Come on, sweetie. You got the anointing. Take it. You got the anointing. Take it. Come on, honey. I want him out of my head forever. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. Bad men. Come out of there. Bad men. Go. Bad men. Go. Insulting my parents. Go. Take a big. Do you speak in tongues? You speak in tongues? No. Okay. Just pray after me. Kora Shanda. Vekova. Bora Shime. Baraba. Did you notice how easily you said that? No problem. Let's do it again and you add some syllables on your own, then it'll start clicking. You already have your gift of tongues, you just haven't released it. It's in your spirit, man. Yeah, it's always been there. Yeah, you got bad teaching. So now it's easy. Kora shanda, velo valama shande, toto shatama. Any syllable, let it go. Kora shande, lemo shaba, tora rama shanda ravasire. I want every demon from my whole family out of me. All of them. Kora shanda ravasite, handa rama shanda ravasi. Any syllable, let it out, sweetheart. Kora shanda rava, hola ma shanda ravasi. You get out of my body right now, you stinking pervert. Every man t- ever touched me, come out of me right now. All of them. Every one of them. Come out of my stomach. Come out of my vagina. Come out of my womb. Come out. Thank you, Jesus. You get out of that body right now and hurry up. 
You're stealing his, you're stealing his destiny. You're robbing his glory. How dare you do that? Come out right now. Come out quicker, you filthy spirit. Come, come on, that body. I said go. I said no. Come out right now. Come out of there right now in Jesus' mighty name. Come out of there right now in Jesus' name. Don't touch him right there. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out of that body right now. Go. Come out of his nose. Spirit of infirmity. Come out of that nose. Go. Frustration. Anger. Go. Right now. Go. Go. Fear of the future. Fear of being broke. Fear of being homeless. Go. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Get out of my throat. Get out of my body. I command every negative thought to come out of my head. I command you to come out right now. Every negative thought come out. Every lie. Every fear. Come out right now. Every fear. Demon of fear. There he is. Demon of fear. Come on out. Get out of that body. Every ugly man that ever laid a finger on me comes out. Every negative thing my parents said about me, I forgive them. Go. I forgive them. Go now. Go now. Out. Out. Thank you, Jesus. Keep coughing. Come out. There it is. Keep coughing. Come out. Good. Keep going. There they come. Come out, spirits. Come out, spirits. Devil, come out of her. Low self-esteem. Fear. Rejection. Self-hatred. Come out right now. Self-hatred. Hating my body. Hating my looks. Come out. Come out right now. Go. Demon of fear. Fear of going home. Go. Fear of going home. Go. Demon of fear. Come out of me. I command you to come out. I command you to come out, Satan. Get out of my body. I said I command you. You have no choice. I told you to go. Lord Dana, fight. Got a girl. Keep coughing. Satan, loose your hold. Out. Out, you rotten devil. How's he doing? Oh, no. He already renounced to it a long time ago. He said he's been a Christian for 15 years. Oh, so let's. That's on his pain. Oh, okay. Witchcraft, come out now. Come out. There he is. Keep coughing. Keep coughing. Keep coughing. Go. Sweater. Sweater. Vamanos. Sweater. Come out right now. Yes. Jesus, holy name, come out. You witch. Amen. We bind your power. Come on, just, just confess it. That's what you do. You just confess it. Lord, I got lust problems. I got lust behavior. Just confess it. Come on. Let's go. Come on, streamers. Put your hand on your body right where your pain is. Put your hand on your body. Take authority. Take authority. Take authority over the works of Satan. Take command. You are a warrior, a soldier. You are a soldier. You are a fighter. You are not a gutless loser. You are not a gutless loser. Fight back now. Fight back now. Fight back now. Satan, lose your hold. Come out right now. Go. Go, every witchcraft. Sorcery. 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 Witchcraft. Go. Come out. Stomach, yeah. Come out of his stomach. Get out of his body right now. Come on, I got. Out of his stomach. Ah, there it goes. Come on out. They're coming out. The devil will obey you if you will fight him. If you try to appease him or try to negotiate a deal, he will not come out. He will not come out. The devil will not negotiate a deal. He cheats. He cheats. He will not, he will not negotiate a deal. 
You must turn on him with everything you got. Turn on him with hate. Turn on him with hatred. Use your gift of hate. Use your gift of hate. I don't have the gift of hate. What are they asking for? Father God, give me the gift of hate. Jesus said you cannot serve two masters. You must hate one of them. Come on. Hate it. You hate it. You hate sin. You hate the devil. You hate failure. You hate it. You hate poverty. You hate poverty. You hate it. Come on. You hate it. Get the gift of hate. Witchcraft in your family? Oh, grab that bucket there. Witchcraft. Witchcraft, do her too. Close your eyes, breathe out of your mouth. Come out of there, you witch. Come out. Come out, you witch. Come out, you witch. Witchcraft, come on out. Come out. Go. Come out. Witchcraft, come out. Witchcraft, come out. Go. Amen. Take a breath and blow. Keep blowing. Come out. Come out of there, you witch. Come out. Get out of the body right now. Go. Come out. Come on out. Come out. Witchcraft demons coming out tonight. They usually have this uh, slime that comes out with it. There's usually some slime. Don't worry about that. Just get the spirits out. Get the spirits out. Come on. Come on. Witchcraft. Masonry. Sorcery. Mormonism. Jehovah Witnessism. Come out. Sorcery. Lust. Witchcraft, fornication, come out, fornication, lust and fornication, come out, right now, come out you filthy lust spirit, get out of my body, I've had enough of you, come out of there, come out, come out you pervert, you pervert, get out of me, you pervert, come out of me right now, go, you pervert, you pervert, Come out. Come out, you pervert. Come out, you pervert. Chronic masturbation. Come out. Come. Chronic masturbation. Come out. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Get out of my body. Lord Dana, fight harder. Come on, sweetheart. Fight harder. Fight harder. There you go. Fight harder. Get out of my head. Everything evil and wicked come out of me now. All of it come out. All of it come out of there. Good. Fight harder. Come on, sweetheart. Fight harder. Come out right now. Go, Satan. Satan, loose your hole right now. Get out of that body. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come out. Come out. Come on out. Come out of there, you witch. Come out, you witch. Witchcraft from Romania. Witchcraft. From Romania. Witchcraft. Sorcery. Rebellion and control. Rebellion. Go. Control. Narcissism. Lust. Go, Satan. Go, Satan. Come out. Hurry up. Get out of there. Thus saith the Lord. Go. Come on now. Streamers, put your hand on your body and just fight. Just fight. Put your hand on your body. Put your hand on your head. 
I command you, Satan, to come out of me. Say it. Treat the devil nasty. You got to be nasty, streamers. Streamers, go to the website. Hit the teaching button. Hit the teaching button. You got to fight. You got to get nasty. You have to become fearsome. Fearsome. You must fight with fury. You must fight. You have the anointing. Use it. You have the anointing. Use it. Come on. Use it. You have the anointing of God. The Holy Ghost is there. Streamers, he's right there with you. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Come on. Use your anointing. Use your authority. Fight. Fight. You are a soldier. You're a soldier. You're not some gutless, quiet, shy, introverted loser. You are a soldier. Fight back now. Come on. Fight back right now. Hurry up. Hurry up. Satan, I command you to go. Come on, use your gift of tongues and then command them to go. Yandaramo shandaraya. Then doramo shada. Yandaramo shandaraya. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Dondaravo shevo. Hello vala vashata. Come out in the name of the Lord. Come out right now. Yandaramo shive. Come on, use your gift of tongues. Hey, can you finish that lady off right there in the black? That one there. She got she, um, curses from an ex-fiance. Come out now. Come out right now, I said. Come on, use your gift of tongues and then fight. Ready? Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out right now, I said. Use your gift of tongues and fight back. Come out now, devil. Hurry up, devil. Use your tongues and then fight back. You, you already have it. You just haven't released it. Yeah, you have it. It's been dormant. You haven't released it. You've gotten some bad teaching in the past, okay? Just speak in, speak in tongues real quick. Hey, will you help this gal? Okay. Speak in tongues. Oh, okay. Oh, speak in tongues. Okay. Yeah, that's all. Okay. Speak in tongues. Let it out. Come on, streamers. Speak in tongues and then attack. Corra Remo shete. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. O Remo Shavala. You are a soldier. You are a soldier. You are not some gutless loser, some pew sucking imbecile at the mega church. Fight back now. Fight back now. O Remo Shavala. Come out. I bind every religious spirit of witchcraft and sorcery. I bind religion. I bind the Shriners, the Masons. I bind Catholicism, Mother Mary demons, Pope demons. I bind Mormonism and Moroni in the name of Jesus. Lo, 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 Ravasai. Come out! Come out! Roman Catholicism, I command you, you sex pervert. You child abuser, I bind your power. Come out now. Come out of my stomach. Come out of my chest, you filthy devil. I command the Eucharist to come out of me. I command the demons of holy water. Come out. Right now. Get out of there. Get out of my mind. Get out of my body. Get out of my home. Right now. Come out. Pope demons, I bind every Pope spirit. I command you out. 
every demons from the ward. I command every spirit from the ward to come out. I command every kingdom hall demon out. I command every demon at the mega church, every fake prophet and apostle to put their hands on me. Come out now. Out. I said, out, I said. Every prophetic fake prophet that put their hands on me and spoke, uh, spoke some supernatural prof prophecy of prosperity, I'll renounce it. I'll renounce that prophecy of prosperity given by that fake prophetess. Come out of me in Jesus' money name. Kundalini. Kundalini. Come out in Jesus' holy name right now. Every spirit from church, every single spirit from church, come out in the name of the Lord. Streamers, you go to the website, hardcorechristianity.com. You've got to read some of these articles. Hit the teaching button. How Satan controls the mind. The other article, Satan's counterattack. You will be attacked within 48 hours of this service. You must be ready for it. You must fight back quickly. You must be ready for it and fight back immediately. Use your authority. Use your anointing and fight. Because you are a soldier. And you repented of your besetting sins. You are not going to die and go to hell. You are going to serve God. You are going to heavenly glory. That's where you're going. You are not going to face judgment and damnation. It's not going to happen. You're going to repent. Right now, I said. Now you'll repent. Now you'll receive the Holy Ghost. Now, as Paul taught us, you get the mercies of God. You get the grace of God today. If you wait till after you're dead, you don't get any grace or mercy then. You must face judgment in hell. Come on now. Let's repent of it. Let's just repent. Father God, I want to go to heavenly glory after my death. Have mercy on my soul, Lord. Have mercy on me. God, have mercy on me. Come on, let's pray like King David. Let's pray like King David prayed. Have mercy upon me, Lord, according to thy loving kindness. According to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. For against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. Purge me, O God, with hyssop. Wash me, O God, and I will be white as snow. Uphold me with thy free spirit, O Lord. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Come on, pray like King David does. Pray like King David. He knows how to pray. He was an expert on prayer and repenting. He was an expert on repentance. You become an expert on repentance. All warriors, all fighters know how to repent. And they enjoy it. They love it. They're grateful to be able to repent. Because after you're dead, there is no repenting after you're dead. And trust me, honey, you'll be dead in a few short years. 78 years years is the life expectancy approximately of an American Christian. 78 years. That's not very long. You got about 10 years left. You got about 15 years left. You got about 21 years left. That's not long, friend. You better repent now and do it now. You better repent now and do it quickly. You better turn from your wicked ways. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. If my people called by my name, if they will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then, says the Lord, I will hear them from heaven. I will forgive them of their sin. I will heal their land. You want to be healed tonight? Then repent first. You want to be healed tonight? Then repent first. Now. Thus saith the Lord, the Holy Ghost, the Lord of all. Now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. Now. Now, says the Lord. The Holy Ghost says now is the accepted time. Not tomorrow. Now. Come on, saints of God. Streamers, listen to me. The time has come. The judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, if it first begin at us, 
What in the world will happen to the sinners? If it first begin at us, where will the ungodly and the sinners be? Come on, friends. God has called you to be a fighter and a warrior. He has called you to be a chosen vessel. He's called you to help others, heal others, pray for others, bless others. Come on. Come on now. This is your call from God. The Holy Ghost said Paul was a chosen vessel. Guess what, son? You are too. Gracias. Come back. Yeah, come back. Okay. I feel much, much better. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Come on now. Let's pray. Sweet Holy Spirit, come save me, Lord. Can you hit the mute for a second? Demon of fear, come out of her. Say it. You spirit of fear, get out of that body right now. Say it. Come out. Get out of that body right now. Don't stop. Come on. Keep going. Come on. Don't stop. Come out. Come out. There. Go. That's him right there. Come out. Come out of his stomach. There he is. Keep coughing. There he is. Keep coughing. Come out. Out in the name of Jesus. Out in the name of Jesus. Demons from my son. Come out of me. Demons from my husband. Come out of me. Go. Out. Out. Come out of me. Go. He came out. You cast him out. Yeah, squeezing it. Yeah, they're gone. They're gone. You speak in tongues? Oh, okay. Go ahead. Louder. You speak in tongues? Go ahead. Follow her. Follow her. Come on now. Tonight is your night to fight in Jesus' mighty name. Just keep fighting. You have the anointing. Go ahead and use it. Next Friday night, I'll see you here. Next Friday night, I'll see you here for another de- satanic butt whooping. Go to the website, hardcorechristianity.com. Read the, hit the teaching button. See you next time.